station of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are NC. Royals baseball from Kauffman Stadium after a long night last night, but it was worth the wait as the Royals took game one from Minnesota 4-3 in 11 innings. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hi everyone, welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre, Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery are coming up. Well, the Royals had chances earlier in the game, but after seven relievers and a walk off, the Royals took game one. Can you believe it? Yes. If we've been watching this Royals bullpen, it's not the same bullpen, but the fact that they were able to hold them in check till they got that big hit, that was sweet. And it was Billy Burns. This is his first RBI as a Royal. And to tell you, just by watching that swing right there, I knew it was a handsy swing. No body involved at all. See the ball, put your hands on it, put the barrel on it, and just make it happen. And he did. And especially for that first RBI to be a walk-off, could be special things to come. But this is impressive, what they're doing in extra innings and continuing to build off of their previous two seasons. This has been a strong mark for this ball club and hopefully it continues this year and into next. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. And as we talk about next year, two players who weren't really part of the original plan this year have had an impact and hope to finish strong. We'll talk more about Chesler Cuthbert and Whit Merrifield. Coffin Stadium. The calendar says it's fall, and so does the weather. Well, the bad news for the Royals this year is that they did not plan on Mike Moustakis getting injured. They did not plan on Omar Infante being released in the middle of the season, but what's come from that is they've got a pretty good idea of what they have in Chester Cuthbert and Whit Merrifield. When teammates see one of their guys go down, they immediately put that mental block up and say, okay, who's next? Because you can't afford to get down. You can't afford to mope in this game. There's no moping or crying aloud at certain times. Now, when the happiness comes, 
when you see guys step up and come and do the job. Chesler Cuthbert, he has not disappointed Moustakis at all with his defense. Moose is saying, wow, he's right on par with me. And he's done a great job with the bat. Whit Merrifield, hey, look, depending on the makeup of this ball club next year, he could find himself out there as a regular. But look, he's done it for a couple of spells. Can he do it for the whole year? His consistency defensively is going to be the main thing, playing second base. But can he get those timely hits? That'll be the question. And another addition next year to the starting rotation will be Jason Vargas, who makes his third start tonight. And Joel and Monty will talk about Vargy when we come back. In the house in September, we're looking for a playoff berth under the tree. Joel Goldberg, Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery. That would be something like a Christmas miracle. What's <laughs> not a miracle, but a good thing, is the return of Jason Vargas. Yeah, and really need, nice to see Vargas go out. It's going to mean so much for him going into this offseason, proving that he's ready to pitch. And I think looking at what he's done over his first couple of starts here, we're going to take a look at some of his early numbers and see where Jason Vargas has been able to maybe kind of get things going. One of the finishing touches as far as getting things back is learning that routine. I think getting back into the routine will prove itself to be a real factor for Jason Vargas. And you see the numbers in Arkea in the driver's seat, maybe backing up why pitching out of the bullpen wasn't the route they wanted to go. Right, exactly. And again, you, you feel like you're healthy, but still, you've been away from baseball for a year. Back into the, those routines that you've accustomed yourself with, you've grown into, and now you're able to go out and do it. This will be his third time out. It should be better tonight. Got his feet wet against the White Sox, then the Indians. Now it's another division opponent, the Minnesota Twins, for the third and final start of the year for Jason Vargas. Entries for Morales, Eric Cosmer, they've been going deep more on that next.
pitch on a nice cool evening here in Kansas City and Jason Vargas set to make the start some wind gusting here tonight wind or no wind we have seen a lot of home runs in baseball this year and Monty for the Royals they're not a home run hitting team but they've had some guys do some great damage yeah and it's really great to see Kendrick Morales turn things around after a very slow start to the season probably going to get 30 on the air Haas likely going to get 25 bombs on the year those are nice numbers especially when they become career highs and we're even seeing Salvador Perez with a career high 22 as we stand and hopefully able to add on to that. Our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball, though, sees home runs up in a big way. I don't think this is the steroid era, but there's certainly been talk about other theories. Well, I think you're looking at the strength and conditioning in baseball. Really, now you're starting to see the numbers in the home run department. But those numbers, you're right, they remind me of those last couple years of my career when numbers were through the roof. Some pitchers saying that the stitching feels tighter, that maybe there's something going on there. Either way, we're back to a lot of home runs, and the Royals will hope they could go deep and remain perfect against the Twins here at home. 8-0 against Minnesota at the K this year with two still to play. Ryan and Hud are up next. blowing in from the northwest so it will cool down even more tonight. Royals and Minnesota Twins Royals took game one last night. 4 three the Royals are 14 and three against Minnesota this year they are eight and zero oh here at Kauffman Stadium. And the Minnesota offense has been struggling over its last 10 games averaging one point nine runs per game and the Royals successfully kept Brian Dozier in the ballpark last night they'll be facing Jason Vargas career numbers against Minnesota his last win was against Minnesota June 8th of last season and he's outside with ball one nice to see Vargas getting a, another chance out here before the season ends it's just he's he's going to be an important part of their rotation next season and for him to be able to get in these games late gives him confidence that I'm going to be a big part of this team. It's a big, another big start. There's no such thing as a meaningless start or a meaningless game in this in baseball. And if you take that approach, you're in trouble. This game will pass you by in a heartbeat. And we weren't really expecting to see him this year. Right. The next thing you know we're seeing him pitching these in these minor league games and I'm, I'm, I'm telling myself going, wow he he's he's serious about this season. Full 
count on Dozier. He was taking his shin guard off, so it's a little embarrassing. Home plate umpire is Ramon De Jesus. Mike Winters, the crew chief, is at first. Todd Tishner, who grew up in Garden City, is at second, and Mike Malinsky is at third. And struck him out with a change up away. <laughs> That'll frustrate a hitter more than anything. First hitter of the game. You're expecting fastballs from pitchers. But Vargas, ball was way outside. He was so sit on a heater that he struck himself out. All right. Our Golden Oak lending keys of the game. Mo from KMO. Three RBI shy of a Kansas City monthly record. Keep it going. Now one more house call for the Dr. Vargas. Vargas on, on his game. He'll slice and dice both sides of that plate. There it is. Now the key is to keep it out of the middle. That's the cat and mouse game between a pitcher and hitter. Because hitters look for it in the middle. And it's surprising how they never miss it. Now they might pop one up, but most of the time they're going to hit it hard somewhere. Curveball dips a little low to Jorge Polanco. It's a good pitch. Looks to me like Ramon De Jesus could have a little hitter friendly strike zone mm -hmm. tonight. And that's just inside. Two balls and one strike. Polanco batted once last night, struck out in the 11th inning. See when I when I talk about Vargas carving up the outside parts of the plate that's where he wants to stay and he's doing a nice job he's just not getting the call. So throwing yeah. strikes is important but throwing quality strikes strikes is more important. And a Jesus is already looking over to the Royals dugout so they're chewing on him. Ramon de Jesus the first Dominican born umpire to appear in the major leagues. Lifted to right. The wind will push it toward the line, and Paulo Orlando makes a two hand grab. And there are two down. Royals defense sponsored by Ford. We talked about Merrifield and Cuth Cuthbert in the open, and 189 combined starts this season. That's more than getting a good look. These guys have taken their opportunity and run with it. And that's exactly what you do at this level. Especially if you're not proven. Proven minor leaguers. You want to make a mark. That's why these games mean something. Always auditioning for work. Switch hitter Robbie Grossman. He was on base three times last night. And down in the count, no balls, two strikes. Facing a guy like Vargas, you almost have to look for certain pitches. Now, he, I'm going to look on the outer half of the plate. He's facing more right-handed batters. I'm going to belly up. I'm going to move up on that plate, and I'm going to look on the outside part of the plate and not try to take him to right field because I'm moving up. I'm going to try to put him on my barrel and pull him. And good lefties that don't have overpowering stuff will pitch inside. They'll knock you off the plate. So as a right hand hitter you're, you're not interested in that pitch. You're looking away fastball change up curveball it's change ups his go to pitch when he needs an out. Now you say you would move up on the plate. And I wonder if hitters are. More reluctant to do that these days they seem to be more locked in and where they are in the batter's box and move a lot less. I would agree good pitch. Three up, three down, two strikeouts, both with his trademark pitch, his changeup. And Vargas has his first scoreless first inning.
Irvin Santana with this starting lineup. Identical to last night, which produced four runs, seven hits in 11 innings, and a game one victory. And Irvin Santana has pitched well lately. We talked about Minnesota's offensive struggles, so it doesn't reflect in his record, but his ERA is good, 3.37. He has been a victim of a lack of run support. Dyson a smash and right to Vargas at first base. Well he guessed right there and that's beautiful. Dyson staying on top of the ball like that. So much improved when him choking up on that bat anymore. He's got total control of the barrel and he's just using his hands and not trying to jump the ball out of the ballpark. Perfect great head position. Good one hand takeoff. And now Whit Merrifield he takes a fastball down the middle for a strike. Whit had a chance to put the Royals in front in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ned Yost called for a squeeze. It wasn't a suicide squeeze. But, you know, Ned was criticized early in his Royals career for all the sacrifice bunting, and then come to find out that. That was not his call that most of the time it's the player on his own bunting but Ned did call for Merrifield to bunt with Gore at third base and Witt just tried to push it a little too hard to the right side but I agreed with the question that was asked Ned after the game how did you feel about Witt bunting there not swinging away he said well I felt pretty good about it because I'm the one who made the call. Yeah. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. When it works, great play, good call. When it doesn't, then you're going to question it. Because with that situation, with nobody or less than two outs at third base, infield in for a hitter like Whitley, that's a golden opportunity to swing that bat and find a hole. But he just got underneath the ball a tad. And the first baseman made a nice play. Full count. And then Witt had another chance to put the Royals in front in the 11th inning, but the Twins ended up intentionally walking him after falling behind in the count. Good year against Minnesota. And that's lined to right, but Kepler was shallow, so he's there to make the play. Two hard hit outs from Dyson and Merrifield. Okay, Urban Santana, he's can be really tough, especially when he's on. His fastball, he's got a four and two seamer, got some two seam run. He'll average, you know, 92 miles an hour. He'll go, might, might touch some 93s. Good sinking action, but his slider is his pitch. That's his, his wipeout pitch, and it's a good one. He can spin it with the best of them. When he gets in, in his groove and his command, gets ahead of hitters, he's going to finish you off with that pitch. Change up is a straight change. There's not a whole lot of uh, sinking and diving away in his actions. A straight change up, good arm speed. He's a real pro. Two balls, no strikes. Hitters saying thank you for not uh -huh. calling that a strike. You could look him up. See him up in the zone. And so far, both hitters just sending, ooh, hit that ball hard off of Irvin. Okay, you see a pitch one, pitch two on the Fox tracks. Down. Cookie. Oof. Haas just trying to do a little too much, just a tad. Three and one. Hosmer drove in his 101st run last night. Broken bat. And off of Polanco's glove, even with the overshift. Osmer's on with two down. That's got to be a hit all the way. Okay, now lots of lots of shifts, but you're not going to shift Haas with your shortstop up the middle. He was over a little bit pull. Wow. But Air. They, did, 
They gave him an air. Wow. Oh man, come on. Now, as so you see his position there, Haas hit that ball hard. Now he's a big league shortstop, no doubt about it. But he looked up right at the last minute. Didn't see it into his glove. I thought it would be a knock. Outside to Morales. One for four last night. Facing a long time former teammate with the Angels. And that's outside 2 0. Morales has three more games, including tonight, to tie or surpass the Royals' record for RBIs. In September, he is one shy of the record with 29. Well, he can do it with one swing of the bat. He's done it before off of Irvin. In his four hits, he's got one homer, 17 at bats. And look at that September numbers. Beautiful thing. Finished strong like that. Finishing strong is not only good for the team, it's good for the individual player. You because going into the long off season, they're gonna have a lot of meetings, organizations are, and they're gonna start slotting players where they believe they should be. And when you rarely will they say, Well, he got off to a slow start. They're gonna say, No, 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 no. We we like how he finished. He finished strong. That's what we want after a long season. A guy who could stand up and say, Look, I'm gonna finish. And that's what he's doing. I respect that more. Now Polanco moves to his right and gets Morales, and that ends the inning. So some hard hit outs, but no score at the end of one. Royals baseball is brought to you by Ram. Get power you can depend on at Ram Power Days. <laughs> Feels like it could be. Happy they could make it. All the way from the North Pole. That guy's got a crown on his head. One, one last getaway before they get to building toys. Dyson calling for it. Orlando calling for it. And Dyson, who is shorter than Paul Orlando, ended up with it. Okay, now, it's all right, Vargi. Don't get upset about that. Now, how did they dropped it? Sure, you could be a little bit upset. But now, Paulo's got his hand there, 
And I don't see Dyson calling for it, but see Paulo is. But you, if center fielder has priority, you have to really let it be known that you got it. And Lorenzo Cain is one of the best at that. I mean, you can hear him all the way up here in the booth when he'll call for it four or five, six times loud because if you call for it once, you know, sometimes the other guy's also calling for it at the same time and you don't hear each other. You're exactly right. The more the merrier. It's a good thing there was no collision. Ball was hit high enough. The main thing was the ball was caught for the out. Vargas working hard, pitch count. You know, hopefully he'll move it up to 75, 80 maybe today. We'll see. Depends on the hitters. As Dave Island said many times, the hitters will tell you sometimes how it's going. If they're raking you, mashing you, hitting line drives, it's not good. The Twins Vargas drives it to center, but Dyson is there. The wind knocked it down some. Two down. 64 degrees at first pitch, and that's the coolest first pitch here since May, May 20th, as summer arrived earlier this year. We had the blazing hot temperatures in early June, so cool but refreshing. Two down to Max Kepler. One for five last night Kepler with an RBI his 62nd of the year. And his first RBI against the Royals this year 31 at bats. Royals have pitched him well he's hitting under 200. Against KC. That is up the line and into the corner. Kepler holds at second base. Kepler didn't look over at third base coach Gene Glenn. He took it upon himself. Now ball down that corner there. You're usually going to take a peek to your left at the third base coach to see if he's waving you home. But Kepler he, he just rubbernecked before he got to second base and he made his own decision. Watch him see he he's making his, his own. He's not looking at the third base coach which is OK. I mean especially since he didn't go and get thrown out. Then you're in trouble. I can't prove this but I'll bet fewer than 50 percent of base runners today make the turn at first on a ball to right field and pick up the third base coach. That's, that's why whenever it's done I like to point it out. But usually it's like five steps before you get to second is when you'll take a quick peek just to see and you're smart because then that puts the pressure on the third base coach if, you, if he does send you and you get thrown out. But if you do that and you do it on your own then you're in trouble. Eduardo Escobar is a left hand batter last night hit an impressive home run to right field. The pitch was down. Vargas gets Escobar to chase it and across the diamond to end the inning. Kepler is stranded at second base. Salvador Perez coming up as we head to the bottom of the second inning.
Salvador Perez, Alex Gordon, and Paulo Orlando are coming up against Irvin Santana. Three out of the four hit the ball hard against Irvin last time up or last inning. Salvi was 0 for 4 last night. 247 this year, 362 against the Twins, and he really wears them out in Minnesota. One of the more prolific visiting hitters in target field history. No swing. Mike Winters, crew chief, is the first base umpire. And that includes a 655 slugging percentage against Minnesota. Into left and into the win. And Grossman makes the play. Now we got to show you the Minnesota Twins defense. 132 different defensive alignments. Wow. That is searching and finding. The right combination, the right players at the right time, and it's been a real struggle for Molly all year long. Telling me before the game, he's never been involved with a team with over 100 losses before. So it's been very difficult him for him in his second year as a manager. He said, well, what are you doing about it? He goes, well, you know, it's not easy. We've got some young players on the team. Sometimes, you know, they're a little complacent. I've got to hold a few team meetings. I got, I got, I got to, you know, I got to, Tell him what I think. Alex, who already has good career numbers against Santana, drops one into center field with one out. They had one more loss, and they tied the Minnesota record. They were the Washington Senators before moving to Minnesota in 1961. But in 1982, the Minnesota Twins lost 102, and this year's team is one loss away from that. Say, did you say 82? 82. Okay, that I heard Ned talk about 82 with Milwaukee. Molitor was on Ned's team. Ooh. He said they went deep. They lost in seven games to the Cardinals that year in the World Series. He said Ned Yost hit a big home run for us the last week of the season in Boston. I said Ned's got some pop. Oh yeah. Yeah. He said Ned helps us helped us out a lot. One of we had the commissioner up here. The first year Ned was manager of the Royals in 2010, Bud Selig, the then commissioner, who was the former owner of the Brewers, and he said Ned hit one of the biggest home runs in the history of the franchise. <laughs> That's going to roll deep. And Paulo's single gets Gordon to third, and runners at the corners with one out. Irvin Santana early in the game just leaving too many meaty pitches over the middle of the plate. There's a spinner, a slider that didn't do much. Paulo's reactions good, short, compact towards the middle of the field. Interesting today as he keeps his six game hitting streak, where he's got a six gamer now talking with Dale Swaim about Paulo. Can Paulo hit for more power? I asked Dale Swain. Dale says, I believe that he can hit 10 to 15 home runs per year, depending on how much he gets to play. He's been talking with Paulo a little bit more in certain situations about trying to do more with the ball. Instead of in a 2 0 count trying to hit a ball to right field for a base hit, how about look for one that you can juice out of the park? And that comes with time, that comes with experience, and, and at bats. So they see a Apollo who could who could make the transition. He's strong enough. He's big enough. He just wants to get established right now, and that's what he's doing. And it takes some time for him to figure out the pitch that he can hit out of the ballpark, what that looks like. Exactly. So he's looking for it before it comes out of the pitcher's hand. That comes with that bats. You know, you'd like to get, you know, 500, 600, 700 ABs. You, you, you got to play. It takes a few years to figure that out. But he's figuring out a lot of things this year. Escobar that not a good pitch to swing at there now down in the count one ball two strikes. 
But that Santana slider is hard to pick up. It looks like a fastball until the last moment. And that's what he's going to go to here with runners in scoring position. Irvin has the third highest percentage of sliders thrown in base or in the American League. Michael Pineda, Chris Archer throw more sliders than Irvin. That's it. John Ryan Murphy is the Minnesota catcher. Did a good job of blocking that one in the dirt. Our Toyota League leaders. And on the topic of Santana being among the best. How about the fifth best road ERA in the American League? Early in his career, I remember with the Angels, Anaheim seemed to be the only place where he could win. He was bad on the road. Rounded to third, out at second, and just got the double play. It wasn't a great feed from Minnesota's Escobar to Dozier, but Dozier got it to Vargas in time. And so Santana makes a big pitch with runners at first and third and one out, and the Royals are scoreless. No score to the third. Jason Vargas has only given up one hit in the first two innings. He'll face the eight, nine, and one hitters in the third. This is John Ryan Murphy finishing up his first year in the Minnesota organization, coming up through the Yankees system out of Princeton. Second round pick out of Princeton. To left center field. And Dyson runs it down in the gap. One down. Let's go down to the field, and here's Joel. All right, the third and final start of the year for Jason Vargas. That's all the numbers he'll have, but I asked Ned Yost this afternoon, how important have these starts been for Jason? I'm healthy. That's what he takes into the winter. I'm healthy and I can compete. That's why it was so valuable for him to come out here and throw 15 innings. I think, you know, he knew at the at the minor league level that he was healthy, but getting back up here and having some success and getting some innings under his belt, you know, just frees his mind up going into the winter, knowing that when he gets to spring training, he's going to be a full go. He's going to be ready to go. And so regardless of what the numbers are and so far in these three starts, so good Jason will head into the offseason maybe without some of those doubts we all know and Ned talked about this he knows how to pitch 
and he showed himself that he was healthy in the minor leagues during that rehab start but there's nothing compared to pitching at the big league level and he'll head into this winter having those three starts behind him guys. All right Joel and by the way that was Joel's direct question that Ned was answering that wasn't just a soundbite from the press conference and the question being you know we the discussion began with how important this offseason was for some of the younger players who are getting their first taste of the big leagues right. and you and I had a conversation about that last night you know what do they take into the offseason and kind of process to get ready for next year and then Joel's question was well what about a what about a veteran like Vargas I mean he's he's been around a long time what is so important for him to take into the offseason after three starts three abbreviated starts and that was Ned's response I'm healthy you can take that in that I'm not only is my arm right but I can get big league hitters out after the major surgery and that is his third strikeout all with his changeup two down in the third That's exactly right I'm healthy and I can pitch and that's what he does he doesn't power past people he just gets people out that's all you're looking for be in his 10th year next year now I like to go on service time in the in the media guides they'll talk about how much service time does the player have but you know if, you, if you've accumulated a few years a couple of September call ups and stuff the media usually adds that on so well, but Vargas he's 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 a 10 year veteran. He fell behind Brian Dozier three and one in the first inning and then ended up striking him out on a changeup. Over the inside Dozier tried to con the home plate umpire into thinking that it was inside. Struck him out with a changeup again. Three scoreless innings, four strikeouts, all swinging, all with the change. Very nice. And five years ago, after that tornado devastated Joplin, Philip wanted to do something to help the victims. So he held a wiffle ball tournament in his backyard and raised more than $5,000. And the event was so successful that Philip, who is 17 now, Philip and his family have hosted the tournament each Labor Day weekend to raise money for other charities around Kansas City, including for Variety, the children's charity, just this past month. So, Philip. Well deserved, yeah. Tip your cap. Sitting in the Buck O'Neill Legacy seat at tonight's game. Nice They've job. raised more than one hundred thousand dollars for local charities. Can you believe that? I saw some highlights of that earlier. 
and I was in the hallway and I saw it on TV and and I was excited because there was a big crowd. People were into it. They were watching every pitch. It looked exciting. Nice job, young man. You should be proud of yourself. One and two on Cuthbert. Especially so young getting to sit in that Buck O'Neill seat. Mm -hmm. Chesler had two hits last night. Two balls, two strikes, and we showed you at the top of our broadcast tonight that after a lull and maybe wearing out some in the final month of the season, he's picked it back up, hitting over 400 in his last seven games with five walks. His on base percentage is over 500 in the past week. As he fights off that pitch in on him, two balls, two strikes. Pokes it to the right side. Dozier sliding play. And Hartley even got to his feet when he unloaded the throw. Had a chance to talk to Dozier before the game about what we were talking about last night, Ryan, about his career year he's having. And, but, but I made sure to point out to tell him, but really what I'm very impressed with is your defense. Your defense has improved. And he looked at me and said, thank you. Everybody wants to talk about my home runs, but I work hard on my defense. He says, and, and moving forward next year, the bottom line for me is I sure this was a career year for me. I'm not going to try to to duplicate my numbers. I want to win. I want to win. He says and I'm going to do whatever it takes for this team to win. So next year you might see him sh shortening up on a swing and going to right field and trying to do things. But he's in a groove this year and he's going ahead and finishing out the way it is and he's he's enjoying his career year but he re recognizes that that's what it is. He may not ever duplicate it again. Yeah, I mean, because no one's going to shake their head at 42 home runs. And the American League record for a second baseman, 40 of those home runs in the lineup as a second baseman. Two and one on Dyson. But the question I asked you last night is, is that the beginning for Dozier, or does he try and do that now every year? Because what he's done against the Royals this year basically is hit a home run to left field, and that's it. Which again, he's hit 11 against the Royals. That's more than anyone has ever hit against the Royals in history. Polanco was set up in the right spot, and that throw takes Vargas off the bag. And that's a base hit for Dyson. So, my getting back to the question last night was, you know, what does Dozier do with that moving forward? Because at some point, the league is going to figure out. How to dramatically cut down his home runs to left field. But my, my first question was, what are you going to do next year? And he said, this is a, it's been a career year, and I'm going to do whatever it takes for my team to win. So I like that. Yeah. You need guys like him. Paul Molitor needs him. He needs leaders on that team. Guys to step up, do what it takes, move the runner if you have to in certain situations, get on base, a little bunt hit, whatever. So I was impressed and I, I always have been in the last few years getting to know him and talk to him a little bit. When he hit some home runs when the, the Royals were in Minnesota. They interviewed him after the game. And he was very stoic and he said we lost the game tonight. Sure it's nice I hit a home run but we lost. I like that. He's not out there trying to say me me I I. Buxton retires Merrifield two down with his 0 for 2. Royals really pitched Dozier well last year our Kubota power stats and Dozier I mean he's been building toward 42 home runs this isn't totally out of the blue but last year he had 179 against the Royals with no home runs and now this year 297 11 home runs 13 RBI so that makes my point I mean he's either hitting a home run against the Royals or that's all. Yeah. I think the issue is. 
And it sounds like this is not Dozier, but the issue can be at times a hitter doesn't see it as a career year and they think it's just the beginning. And so well, I'm going to hit 50 next year yeah, and. Right. And the exact opposite happens and a, gar a guy's career changes because he changes. Well eventually. They're going to pitch him better. They're going to throw they're going to spin more balls to him. And just because you lead off the game most pitchers all like to establish the fastball well they're, they're going to have to make some changes. A blast to right field. Kepler is back. Two nothing Royals. That sounded like a gunshot. Sure did. Twenty. He's excited and he should be. Round off those numbers. Last few games of the season. 25 will work. No. 25 and 103. Just shy of the hydration station that he named. Chopped to first and it stays inside the bag and Morales is 0 for 2 with one out Dyson reaches with an infield single and listen to this. <laughs> Those few people in the front row might need some earplugs. Oh that's beautiful. He knew it. Eric Hosmer hits his 25th home run, drives in his 102nd and 103rd RBIs, and Jason Vargas pitches with the lead. Jorge Polanco, Robbie Grossman, and Miguel Sano are coming up. Vargas has given up only one hit in the first three innings, and he has struck out four.
Is that a swing? It was. One ball, two strikes. Hi, Monty. Hello. How are you? Hey, guys. Monty, thanks for joining us. You bet. How, if you had, and you did have surgery on your shoulder, correct? I did. Okay, and how long were you out? Uh, I missed the entire offseason. I came back. I probably rushed a little bit. I wanted to be ready for opening day, which I was, but uh, physically, I don't think I was truly baseball ready. And remind me, what year was that? At the end of the 96 season, okay. right September of 96, okay. before the season ended. You've been, so you've been around for a while already. How important, this is hypothetical, but how important would it have been for you if instead of missing the offseason, just into the Royals dugout, you would miss most of the season? Would it have been just kind of tying this to Jason Vargas? How important would it have been for you going into the next offseason to just get a few big league games under your belt? Well, I think it's really important to, to get action. I, we've talked to a lot of guys, particularly we've had Tommy John. I had shoulder surgery, so it's a little different. But I think with the Tommy John, having the chance to pitch the year before when you make your full comeback. So in other words, this season, having any mound work at all is such a bonus for guys. And we're seeing Vargas just really kind of dissect, his head likes to say, these hitters and I, I and, and, and it's really important and if you watch Vargas tonight a lot of these pitches his pitches his change up and his, his off speed pitches they're designed to finish off the plate out of the strike zone they appear to be strikes and hitters swing at them and that's the real key is deception and they're in good location and they're in locations where hitters are not going to do anything with them even if they do make contact so great to see him seemingly in midseason form to me we saw his stuff his stuff looked fine but just the way he's able to to pinpoint his pitches to me is real key. I agree. Now Rhino asked you about were you ready you said physically you weren't ready. So if you weren't ready physically you couldn't have been ready mentally. Physically I was able to throw the ball with the same velocity and even actually a little bit more velocity because I've worked hard I've gotten strong but there's a process physically where you have to relearn the proper muscle memory the mechanics you have to get them back because when you're hurt oftentimes you do things a little different than what you normally do as a result you kind of teach your body bad habits so you have to physically train yourself to do it the right way again and that's where I was short and, and so what, what I'm ta talking about is I, ha I have knee surgery in the offseason and if I if my knee was still if it was I felt a little bit of uh, pain in there going in to try to make a team I was a little unsure of myself uh, compared to other years when I came in healthy and strong mentally I was ready. So there's a big difference that mental muscle is important for you to perform out there. Absolutely and I think that's part of the the process that balance of understanding both are ready you're ready physically with regards to the health and regard with the mechanics and then also mentally knowing that you're back on track and knowing you're able to go out and perform at that level. Another close pitch that misses three balls two strikes. Let's take a look on our Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. It was inside. Vargas struck out Grossman with a change in the first inning and now a change is rolled to short. Escobar just in time. Two outs. So you're physically ready and maybe then some so I'm guessing the radar gun would suggest that you were back but maybe you didn't have your normal precision exactly and, and what happens is you get out of your game a little bit trying to prove to yourself and trying to prove to the, the team and the trainers and everybody that you are physically ready and ready to perform and unfortunately that's not what it's all about it's all about the precision if you're a pitcher it's that precision ability to put the ball in places like we're seeing Jason Vargas do that are going to get you success and results. Two down to Miguel Sano. He flied out to center field in the second inning. Little bit tight. One and zero. I think another thing impressive to me is if you were to take Jason Vargas and maybe one of his best games he pitches first year with the Royals, and compared to what he's doing right now, I mean, could you tell any difference? No. I mean, it's hard hard for me to see any difference. Yeah. Good point. He's got everything working. Thing I like about him is he gets the ball and he throws. Okay. And he puts a lot of trust in his catcher. How often do you see Jason Vargas shake off a sign? I mean, he gets the sign and he goes to work. Right, being on the point. same page. Right. I, I, I've got him thir 12 to 13 seconds in between pitches. Well, if we ever go to a clock, 
as they have as high as triple a now a pitch clock <laughs> Vargas I'm sure will be one of the guys they'll use in the promotional video promoting the reasons why they want to speed things up and he's not Mark Burley as far as you know getting that ball and throwing it in there like 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 Burley did but it's nice for the defense to stay focused and stay concentrating on what he's doing up there. A reminder as you enjoy a cold one look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Sano is the first walk given up by Vargas. Now curveball drops in for a strike to Kenny Vargas. Vargas against Vargas. Kenny Vargas lined to center his first time up. Really the only hard hit ball by a Twins hitter tonight. And now a changeup is cut on and missed. No balls, two strikes. Nice how he turns that over HUD finishes off the plate away and another unique thing about Vargas he can throw that same pitch on the inside part of the plate to a right handed batter. Yep and it's it's hard and soft away. But the but the fact that he when he's on he's missing off the plate he's not missing in the middle. With the lack of velocity he's got to live on the edges but he's got to be able to show those right handers in to open up away. You saw Vargas shaking off Salvador Perez. Two balls, two strikes. I could only see Vargas shaking off Salvador Perez. Sometimes Salvi will ask the pitcher to shake off a sign just to try and get in the hitter's head. But most of the time, Vargas picks up the sign and goes to work. Three and two. Kepler is on deck. He has the only hit for Minnesota. And now they're going to talk over the 3 2. So, what happens right here, Monty? Did catcher basically say, What do you want to throw? He may reinforce you saying, Hey, you got a really good change up tonight. He may recommend something or he may just ask you, What do you, what do you feel good about? What's good for you right now? Will the catcher ever try and talk you out of what you want to throw? If you shake them off a couple of times, they're really stern about a particular pitch. They may give you a good reason why you should go with what they want to throw. Just like Salvi did there. <laughs> Six strikeouts, five with his changeup, and Vargas begins tonight with four scoreless innings.
have not lost to the Twins at Kauffman Stadium this year. No score into the bottom of the third, and with one out, Gerard Dyson singled, and with two outs, Eric Hosmer took Irvin Santana deep, his 25th home run of the year, and he's driven in 103. Salvador Perez will lead off for a second time tonight. They fly to left field, leading off the second inning. That ball came off the bat extremely loud, by the way. <laughs> Monty has all of the metrics on his computer right here in his scorecard. How about that? He's updated 106 exit speed for Hosmer's homer. Can't see it. Ah, too bad for Salvi. Those are the easy hits you want. Second Eric, time that Salvi's fly to left. Yeah, Eric Hosmer on his home run. The ball left the bat at 106 miles an hour, traveled a distance of 413 feet, and the launch angle was 34 degrees, if it matters. 34, 35, whatever it takes. <laughs> that's right. Well, might as well go 35 since that's his number. Bonnie, I stole that right off your sheet there. Hope you didn't mind. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Team I, effort here. I got to evolve into your, your system. Alex single to center in the second inning. One ball, one strike. Already had good numbers against Irvin Santana, which includes a couple of home runs. Two and one. Do you ever really see Alex bail out of the way of a pitch coming? I mean, does he? You don't see him throw his bat and get out of the yeah. way. Have to get up out of the dirt. You're right. No, I don't no, know no. if I've ever seen that. <laughs> He's not afraid of the ball. He likes to hurt it. Exactly. Two and two. Not a lot of dirt on his jersey, but a lot of pine tar by the time the game is over because of his follow through and his on his back and then resting the bat on his shoulder. Santana strikes him out, and that's Urban's first strikeout tonight. All right, Monty, promote. Okay, fans. Come enjoy the last buck night of the season tomorrow while watching Royals baseball and saving some hard earned cash. Enjoy delicious hot dogs and peanuts for a dollar piece. Get your tickets now by calling 1-800-6-ROYALS or online at royals.com slash promotions. Yeah, and I think the weather's supposed to stay the same, isn't it? Is that a swing? No. See tomorrow high of 72 low of 52 no rain in the forecast looks like no clouds in the forecast so a great night to come out here really our last three weeks of baseball are going to be pretty good mm -hmm. weather wise. I wonder how the fish are biting. This weather change mm -hmm. usually brings them on. Follow back up to 300 with his single in the second inning. You know, we've been talking about the younger players, and with Paulo, we're talking about major league experience. But I mean, you really have a good evaluation of these guys because we've seen them play well, we've seen them go into a slump, and we've seen them dig themselves out of a slump. So next year, if Paulo's playing on a more regular basis, Chesler Cuthbert with Merrifield guys who have had quite a bit of playing time this year if they are dealing with some struggles well now there's a little bit of a track record of them.
being able to get out of it. Right, no doubt about that. Getting that experience the year before helped so much in the first full season for guys who were called up this year for the first time. And we know last year the experience for Apollo was so important, but I think almost every player is going to experience some failure and oftentimes leads to a demotion going to the minor leagues, picking yourself back up and figuring out what you have to do to be successful. And Whit Merrifield's a great example of that. Just inside a full count. Apollo. Apollo. You see his second half numbers as far as the power goes. He's, he's starting to recognize more pitches. And Monty, I was talking with Dale before the game. He thinks he can be a 10 to 15 home run guy. If in certain counts, instead of trying to get a little lousy single to right, he starts trying to hit a homer once in a while. Well, staying within yourself but understanding the situation, that's in key. A little bit outside. So Santana walks his first. Ned Yost talked about the young players playing winter ball during the offseason before tonight's game. As a player, I just remember I always made my best improvements over the winter because I'd, you know, sit down and analyze and think about what the coaches were trying to portray to me. Um, you know, but then I had, you know, no stress, no, you know, Plenty of time to sit back and okay, I, I think I understand what they're talking about and go out and set forth to you know getting it done. So not talking about winter ball, but talking about the experience here and the processing that happens during the off season when you go home and now you have some experience to draw upon. Okay, you know where did I do well? Where was I struggling? And those adjustments are hard to make in season. Yeah, they're very difficult to make. At this speed, the way that this game is played at the at this level with the speed, it's difficult to try to make adjustments on the fly. But that's one thing that as you get more experience, you learn how to kind of slow the game down. As a result, then you can make those adjustments a lot easier. Better believe it. Slowing the game down is hard for some. You get the crowd gets get you worked up. Lights, the cameras, the TV. You know, you want to come out of yourself, out of your shoes a little bit. Now, one of the areas that I believe Paulo can improve on is his plate discipline. That was just his 13th walk in 440 ABs. He's hitting his average. He's hitting his way. But he he walks, you know, 20, 30 more times. That's going to do a lot for his batting average and get him on base. Four in the books. Royals lead two nothing. Top of the fifth inning, and there is Joe Maurer, who's had an excellent career against the Royals. Although he's 0 for his last 15 against KC, our University of Kansas Hospital Injury Report 
strained quad back in the middle of August. So he's only played in 22 of the last 38 games. He has not appeared in the first two games of this series. Maurer hit 265 last year, by far the lowest in his career. And he's hit 261 this year. One ball, one strike on Max Kepler. Still in the middle of that mega contract. And two more years on that contract after this year. Well, obviously, he's not good enough to go because Paul Mauder today before the game was telling me, I want to beat the Royals in the worst way. Having a hard time doing that. Well, here's the number to support that HUD. So if it, so, if he was available, he'd be in there. Molly would put him in there. Since 2013, so the last four years, the Royals are 51 and 22 against Minnesota. That's the best record for one team against any other team in the major leagues. Now keep in mind from 2004 to 2012 a nine year period the Royals were 43 games below 500 against Minnesota so this is called payback the worms turn Escobar surprised that that pitch was called a strike he chased a curveball down in the second inning and grounded out to third. Now 0 and 2. 70 pitches for Vargas. His pitch count in his first start was right around 45. And his start Thursday was in between 60 and 70. And he threw exactly 70. Base hit left field in between Escobar and Cuthbert. Escobar is on with one out and now 71 pitches for Vargas. And nobody warming up in the Royals bullpen. Only one long inning so far. Efficiency, that's a key. Did you just see what I saw, Monty? What? I think I did. Hud, do you know what that was? Yeah, it's a wasp. What were you planning on doing with that wasp? I was going to pick him up, grab him by his head, and, and throw him out so nobody in the stands got him. He wouldn't drop on him. Want him to sting nobody. Okay. A wasp landed on one of our television monitors up here in the booth. Monty and I were recoiling. <laughs> and I think for a second I thought Hud thought that was a little rally mantis or something like that. It was going to pick him up. That's what I was saying. You and I looked at each other. What is he doing? <laughs> was just and even the wasp was shocked that you were trying to touch it, and he took off. I mean, if the wasp was thinking, if this guy's crazy enough to try and pick me up, man, I'm out of here. I was thinking of the fans down there. Didn't want nobody to get stung. That's called taking one for the team, Hud. That's right. But he flew away. Well, you got to throw Ooh. a strike tonight, man. I mean, it's got to be in the grid. Yes. I'd love to have that pitch called strikes. Look at how he's working the angles, though, working the edges of the plate. that pitch now Vargas is pretty cool on the mound I mean he hardly shows any emotion and according to the grid just inside <laughs> Ramon de Jesus man he's got that grid program into his eyesight but there has been no visible reaction from Vargas on non calls and again just missing inside he's very consistent Wow. He's trying to get him a swing at that. He's not necessarily looking for the strike. He, he wants the hitter to swing and jam him. Roll over that left side over there. Put him in the lane. Still three and two. 
I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go back in there again. Murphy's got to swing at one of those. Mm -hmm. He wants to get Vargas to throw over to first base. And try and get him with a changeup. Runner goes, and it's fouled away. Vargas could throw any one of his three pitches right here. If it's a strike, he's got a great chance of getting it out. Runner goes again, and a changeup is fouled away again. So, HUD is a hitter here. Are you thinking, well, he's not going to throw me three straight changeups? Yeah. No, you, no he, he's, he's going to look for that inside pitch here again. Vargas went in there several times in a row and he's going to try to get back in there and what, he, what he's looking in there for is his little ground ball to the left side. Twins stole three bases last night off the Royals. Now the next pitch will be number 80 and there's some movement in the Royals bullpen. Escobar was running. And Merrifield runs him down. So he's playing a little cat and mouse game with the hitter and the runner at the same time. Yes but a nice job by Hosmer instead of giving it up right away he committed Escobar. That's the key to a one throw tag him out. Watch him see how he's got him going and Merrifield closed. Perfect. One throw is the, is the ideal situation but you've got to close that gap and Haas is doing that. See how he's holding the ball right there. He's not faking. I see a lot of young teams and young players faking and when you fake it sure the runner might be wondering what you're doing but so is the guy trying to catch the ball. So most organizations will teach that just like Haas hold the ball up there and run with it. That way the guy you're getting ready to throw it to you're not faking him because if I went like this to you, you know if I act like I was going to throw it to you you'd, you'd be ready for the throw right so that messes him up. Line to left and past Alex. So the caught stealing may have saved a run. John Ryan Murphy has a two out double. OK now he's looking heater in this situation. Vargas going to give it to him with nobody on base. OK look at, the, look at the grid there. OK that's the first one that was in the 10 pitch at bat there and when a hitter sees that many pitches he's going to get confident and he tried to sneak a piece of cheese by him. Not going to work. Exactly one pitch. Out of the what the 11 pitches he threw in the middle part of the plate. Yeah and, and he didn't miss it but that was a good at bat. By Murphy. John Ryan Murphy. Kevin McCarthy. Appears to be warmed up and ready to go he was one of the. Seven relievers last night he pitched a scoreless inning scoreless seven. And Vargas is up over 80 pitches. Byron Buxton struck out on a change in the third. When I saw Dave Allen coming out of the dugout I was afraid it was Ned Joe's coming out to make a pitching change. We saw uh, Barrios get taken out last night four and two thirds in a situation similar to this but glad to see Vargi out here get another out chance to get a win. Curveballs down and in. And Barrios wasn't really getting knocked around. But it's 77 pitches in four and two thirds innings. Was lifted from the game and Minnesota had the lead at the moment. 
Off the end of the bat, going to be tough. And not in time. Buxton, one of the fastest runners in the division. That gets Ryan Murphy to third. Yeah, there's no way they're going to get him there. Merrifield was playing him to pull up around the back side of the, of the infield. So he had a long way to go. And Ned is going to stay with Vargas. And why not? He has struck out Brian Dozier twice. With changeups, and there's a first pitch changeup. And what what makes that pitch so deceptive is it's coming out of the same arm speed as that fastball. And I guarantee you know left-handers, that's how they make their living. The guys that don't throw hard. It's it's the deception of the arm speed. The hitter's trying to pick it up, but the last minute the parachute pulls out on it. Big item so far in this inning was Vargas picking off Escobar at first. Otherwise, Minnesota's on the board right now. Monty Face, Tom Glavin, Jamie Moyer, Bob Ojeda, all of those left handers that, that, that are very similar to Vargas. And I can tell you from experience that they can give you more headaches than facing Randy Johnson, Sid Fernandez, you know, Terry Mulholland, young guy who threw 95, 96 miles an hour. But much harder to hit these guys. Can you see a little, either one of them pitchers in Vargas? Yeah, another guy, another former Royal that he reminds me a lot of is Charlie Liebrandt. Doesn't throw hard, but he could get it in on your hands, break your bat, make you look silly with about a, you know, an 88 to 90 mile an hour fastball. Yep, I faced Charlie, but what's different between Charlie and, and, and Vargas is Charlie's arms and legs. He had, he, he was very deceptive. He used that big time. And good job by Vargas. So Ned sticks with him. It takes 87 pitches, but he gets through five. And Minnesota strands two in the fifth inning. Great final house call, Dr. Vargas. Jason Vargas is back. Three starts tonight, his best, so he takes that into the offseason. Five scoreless innings on four hits. And a chance for a win with the Royals leading 2 0. Chesler Cuthbert lost a hit on a sliding play in shallow right by Minnesota second baseman Brian Dozier. Chesler batting ninth tonight. And down in the count 0 and 2 looking at back to back sliders. Santana's slider 
And I don't remember if it was like this when he was with the Angels or even the Royals, but it looks more like a curveball now. Has has a little bit more depth to it. He, he, or in his early days, it, had, it, was, it was more lateral movement. It was a little bit flatter in the zone. I, I talked to him in Minnesota when he when he the, the day he faced us, and he said that that's from maturity. I know I know exactly how to drop that ball in there. So it's got more of a downward break to it, and as a reason why he's been so good and so consistent. Yeah, a lot of times guys will learn how to throw different type of sliders. You know, a really good slider doesn't move a whole lot. A lot of times young guys want to make that slider move a lot. It gets you in trouble because you'll spin it and it just kind of stays in the middle part of the strike zone. <laughs> Pretty good one right there to Cuthbert. Yeah. You make a hitter go to his knee. This is not going to be on Chesler's highlight reel. And that slider wasn't necessarily in a great location, but it acted almost like a changeup because he had great arm speed, great mm -hmm. arm slot, and it had less velocity than his fastball. Yeah, Chesler was more out in front of it than he was fooled by it, or fooled by the movement of it. Oftentimes, I would describe a slider like that as being so bad it's good. Okay, you you, you really didn't finish it off. It didn't finish out of the strike zone. It kind of kind of spins there but the lack of velocity and it looks like a fastball and you get out in front of it just like Chesler did mm. spin him in the ground. <laughs> Two and one on Dyson he lined to first on the very first pitch thrown by Santana tonight and then reached with an infield single in the third. He scored on Eric Hosmer's two run home run. One thing that maybe has changed on Santana a little bit is his arsenal or maybe the style of pitching. But one thing has not changed is his demeanor on the mound. He's Going back to his days as an angel, even the same guy. He's always been exactly the same on the mound. Stoic. That's what you want. And now he's experienced the tight strike zone tonight. It's about as much of a reaction you're going to get out of him. It, he seemed a bit stunned that that wasn't called a strike. Dyson grounds it up the middle, but Polanco is right there. Two outs. Royals fans, it's time to celebrate the best fans in baseball. Join us for Fan Appreciation Day this Saturday, presented by Sprint. The day will feature games, giveaways, and great prizes. Plus, the first 10,000 fans will receive an exclusive pair of Royals mittens, courtesy of Sprint. Purchase tickets now at Royals.com or by calling 1-800-6-ROYALS. We appreciate you, the fans. Come out and get your mittens. And it's a... Very odd start time, not the typical 6:15 on a Saturday. That game will start at 3:15 to accommodate national television. And Sunday, a different start time as well. 2:15? Yes. Now, where they start that last year, or was it two years ago, where they wanted everybody starting at the same time? Yes. And it was I'll tell you exactly when it was it was last year. Two and one on wit because what they want to avoid is you have two teams. Fighting for a top spot in the division one team wins and you know two hours ahead of time and it just kind of takes some of the emotion out of the other games being played so everyone starts at 215 central time. Also, maybe takes the ability to rest a pitcher that maybe was going to have to start to get you into the postseason, or a position player. Levels of playing. Field. Yeah, it yeah. sure does. You know, a manager pull might everyone out after the third inning. Yeah, you may not do that with everybody playing at the same time when they're scoreboard watching. I like it. I think it's fair. Out to Kepler in right field. That'll do it for the Royals in the bottom of the fifth. Behind Eric Hosmer's home run, the Royals lead 2 0.
wins, perhaps Irvin Santana is done in this game too. Wild card standings right now. Toronto looking good. Baltimore, they got Detroit breathing down their neck, and Seattle and Houston follow after that. Our Taminia Mazda game break takes a look at Seattle and Houston. And if the Astros are going to get back into this one, it's not going to be tonight. Devastating game for them and their hopes while Seattle Robinson Cano three run home run off of Doug Fister in the first inning all Seattle as they are making a late push for the playoffs the Royals still technically alive Let's just keep saying that for three or four more days <laughs> Paul Mulder is talking with Mike Winters crew chief we have something to do with the Telephones down to the bullpen. All the attention, and rightfully so, that Vin Scully has gotten, this being his final year, he'll broadcast his final game on Sunday. Bill Brown, who's a great guy, long, long time Houston Astros broadcaster, radio and television, mostly television the last several years, broadcasted his last game. For the Astros today. So a nice little ceremony for him at Minute Maid Park. Kevin McCarthy and Ned Yost keeps putting him in in the so called high leverage situations. I like his stuff a lot. I really like his sinking fastball. And it's not just a, a 90 mile an hour sinker, he's got some velo on it. So he'll go 92, 95 with his heavy sinker, slider, changeup. Three pitch mix, multiple innings guy. And the thing they like about him is his competitiveness. Real competitor. Gets out there, goes after him. Now throwing quality strikes is something Ned's looking for. And he really wasn't a guy we heard a lot about during the course of the season. I mean, at least I didn't. And then we you talk to people later in the year about you know who's a potential call up. They said he's the guy to keep your eye out for. And you know quality starts I mean excuse me quality strikes for a starter is more important than a reliever I think because with, with, at least with his pitch that heavy sinker that'll play pitched contact. Yeah yeah he can he can just throw that that bowling ball sinker up there and it's going to hit a lot of into the bats and will get a lot of ground balls with that if he can get consistent with it. And I remember HUD when in spring training we had Dayton Moore on with us. And we were going through potential guys in the bullpen, and he was talking about Chin Ming Wong, who spent most of the year with the Royals. And he said, with all the power the Royals have in their bullpen, they don't have a guy that you can call on and get a ground ball. You're right. I remember the importance of Chin Ming. And right. And that's what he thought. So now he appears that Ned, this has kind of become Ned's ground ball guy or strikeout guy, as Polanco is 0 for 3. Time for our sprint trivia question. And the answer is Eric Hosmer. Among the 17 players with 100 or more RBIs this season, who are the five youngest? Is that one of them? Okay, four others. I'll assume Trout has 100. I don't know. Seems like he has 100 guess. every year. That's a good guess, Monty. About Mookie Betts. Holy HUD. Two down, three to go. Trout has 99, by the way. Sorry, Monty. Missed by one. Have they started playing yet tonight? Yeah, good guess, though. Albert Pujols is not one of them. I, I got to be honest. I didn't realize there are 17 guys with 100 or more RBIs. Balls flying out That's of the yard. Big number. Mm -hmm. Bobby Grossman struck out and grounded out against Vargas. Nice play, McCarthy to his glove side. So he throws strikes and he fields his position well. 
He's athletic. Now, Whitley Merrifield, second, look where he is. Now, this it might have been a tough one for him to get. Now, he could have got to it, but would he have thrown him out? Grossman runs well. Nolan Arenado. Ding, 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 ding. Look, Two left. Freddie Freeman. Sano, a shot to left field, one hop to Alex. So Sano, who walked his last time up, is on with a two out single. We need one more, two more. Say it. It's going to say Rizzo. Rizzo. Had it, had, had, had From face. Greece? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Yeah. First Anthony. Baseman. Anthony, yeah. Couldn't figure out okay. his first name. Yeah, Rizzo. Okay. Pretty good player. HUD's on a roll tonight. Well, you, you were. Awesome last night. I jumped on your back. Well, you I, you that was to the hall. There was only two Hall of Famers that were out there. Well, that were no, Holtzy showed me the list. There's many, many Hall of Famers who have managed. But those are the only two I could think of that I remember during my lifetime. So I just kind of lucked into that one. Is one of them Rizzo's teammate? Chris Bryant? That's actually was Monty's. Ding 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 ding. Way to get in. Way to get in on Monty. Vargas has lined to center and struck out. Those at bats against the Royals. Vargas blasted to right center field. Kenny Vargas has tied the game. That was a one-two pitch. Couldn't make the pitch to get out of the inning. Here we are bragging on McCarthy in that heavy sinking fastball, and he left one up. And on contact, that was gone. Yep, right down the middle. Well, hang him slider. Cement mixer? Yep. Those don't come back. Oh, and one on Kepler. That was the ninth home run for Kenny Vargas. A couple years ago, Minnesota figured they're going to get a lot more of those from Kenny Vargas. Think about some of the young Minnesota prospects a few years ago. Kenny Vargas, Oswaldo Arcia. Danny Santana. Was it last year we were in Minnesota for their opening day? And I think Vargas almost tore the bleachers out with the home mm -hmm. run he hit. It was All those guys last year were in the minor leagues as much as they were in the big leagues. Maybe in a little different spot right now if Kenny Vargas was who they thought he was going to be. Danny Santana was going to be their shortstop. Oswaldo Arcia in the outfield. Arcia, what, he's with his third or fourth team this year. He's in San Diego. Then you mix in Sano, you mix in Buxton, and all of a sudden, man, that team's loaded with young prospects. But they're still growing. Three and two from McCarthy to Max Kepler. That was the first home run given up by McCarthy at the big league level. Got to be careful with this guy. He has 17 home runs. 
And it's pounded foul, still three and two. Kepler's on with two down. So McCarthy got a strikeout. Then he made a good play on a ground ball from Grossman. But now Sano is singled. Vargas is homered. Kepler is walked. And they're back to work in the Royals' bullpen. Salvi's back out there to try and pump him up. All right, let's answer our sprint trivia question. Five youngest in the major leagues with 100 or more RBIs. And there you go. Mookie Betts, 23 years old. Chris Bryant, 24. Nolan Arenado, 25. Eric Hosmer, 26. Anthony Rizzo, 27. Wow. Is Arenado MVP? You got Bryant, the most home runs. He has the most RBI. Serenado, second most runs scored, most total bases. And he plays a gold glove caliber third. Unfortunately, and many voters will factor this in, his team is 11 games under 500 and not in contention. So fair or not, some will factor in most valuable player to a contending team. One ball, one strike on Escobar. He was a big out for Jason Vargas last inning. He was on with a one out single and then he was caught stealing. And now Kepler running. And he's safe as the ball rolls away from Escobar. That's the fourth stolen base in the first two games of the series for Minnesota. Yeah, sixth for Kepler now. Salvador Perez, a little bit high with the throw, but great jump, and he's able to get in under the tag. Esky couldn't hold on. Would have been safe anyway. That was interesting watching Kepler run there too. I mean, you got some guys who just put their head down and go. You have some guys about halfway will take a little peek. He was looking in the whole time he was running to second base. And usually that'll that'll take away from your speed. Three and one on Escobar. Side back to back walks. So a two outs and nobody on, a single, a home run, and back to back walks. Mm. And what Ned Yost likes the most about Kevin McCarthy is his ability to throw strikes. And now with two walks after the two run home run, Ned has to dip back into the bullpen. Mm. McCarthy didn't want that. Peter Moylan is a Chevy call to the bullpen.
Football is brought to you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers. Visit for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. By Panera Bread, food as it should be with 24 KC Metro locations. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. Good start to the inning for Kevin McCarthy, but then a single, a home run, and two walks. And here's Peter Moylan, who pitches in a fifth consecutive game. He pitched in all three of the Royals Tigers games over the past weekend. He pitched last night, and here he is tonight. He has been the Royals fireman the last two weeks or so. Well, with the sink he gets on his fastball and the tilt on that slider, I think the extra work is probably good for him. Two and zero, oh. and in that fireman role last night, Ned Yost brought him on. Similar situation after a couple of walks. And got the final two outs of the inning, stranding two. Two balls and one strike. Uh, it was interesting to see the Aussie confrontation between, between Peter Moylan and James Beresford. And I talked to both of them today. I said, Pete. Came up and in on your homie, man. You came up and in on him. He goes, "That's right, that's right, I did." So I talked, <laughs> I talked to Beresfield, and he goes, "Yeah." Well, after that, I tried to get eye contact with him, and he wouldn't look at me. <laughs> so you can tell it's on. I'd hope to see that confrontation again. That was beautiful. It's only three Aussies in the big leagues. Liam Hendricks, Hendricks is the other one. Was that before last night or before tonight? I don't know. That, that must have been okay, so they're all yeah. smiles again tonight. Well, yeah, but <laughs> until they get between the lines and they get competing, man, it's on. Moylan. Underhands to Hosmer, and he gets the job done. Minnesota ties it. Kenny Vargas hits a two run home run. We're tied at two to the bottom of the sixth. Hit a two run home run in the third inning. Kenny Vargas hit a two run home run in the sixth. Those are our Dodge drive to the game. Oh man, I'm going to tell you what, Hoffman unloaded. That ball was loud and far. 25th, it was a beautiful thing. In the sixth inning, Kenny Vargas says, you know what? I can match that distance. 
And he did with his eighth. Buddy Bashirs will pitch the bottom of the sixth inning. He had two thirds scoreless last night, also coming on for the Minnesota starter. That was Jose Barrios. Tonight it's for Irvin Santana with Hosmer, Morales, and Perez coming up. Hosmer reached on an error in his first at bat and then unloaded the two run home run. throws him out and that's the first out of our sonic slam inning. Our contestant is William White from Independence Missouri. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning William wins nine hundred dollars. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park William wins twenty five grand from Sonic and the Royals. Willie I hope you get your money. Right here. Morales is grounded to short and grounded out to first. It's a second straight start where Paul Walter has lifted his starter after 77 pitches. And Irvin Santana had retired seven of the last eight following the Eric Hosmer home run. I guess with a loaded bullpen, just keep running a different look out there every inning. Yeah, and I know that Molly had asked Irvin Santana if he even wanted to make tonight's start. I think tonight was his 30th start of the season, so he elected to do so, but oh. apparently a lot of guys in that bullpen that can cover for him. And Polanco brings it down with re entry burns on it. Yeah, he just missed that. Fans get closer to the action at the K with our Royals Memories program. Choose between a variety of unique opportunities, such as photo on the field, watching batting practice, and delivering the game ball. All experiences are available for purchase each game exclusively through the MLB.com ballpark app. Download the ballpark app, pick up grades, and select a once in a lifetime experience you'll cherish forever. Two down to Salvador Perez. He's flied to left field twice. Breaking ball in for a strike. Matt Strom is getting ready for the top of the seventh inning with the nine, one, and two hitters coming up. Foul tip, and it's 0 and 2. Oh, sure, is doing a pretty good job of. Keeping him off balance, 88 to 94 with his fastball. He'll vary in speeds there. Curveball changeup. Right up the line to Escobar. That's the inning. Bashirs comes out of the pen and gets the job done. And we move to the seventh in a 2 2 tie.
As we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Yeah, really good stuff here from Jason Vargas tonight. He's got to be feeling great about his recovery, about all the rehab he went through, and now after his third start, going a three, a four, now a five-inning stint. Very nice work from Jason Vargas. He can close the book on his season, get ready for next year, and feel really good about what he's done to get ready. And now Matt Strom in the top of the seventh inning. Buxton jumps on a first pitch fastball. Eighty seven pitches five scoreless innings for Vargas and six strikeouts. Buxton Dozier and Polanco in the top of the seventh. And Strom's ahead 0 and 2. Matt Strom, 19 appearances, a 1.37 ERA, and a 188 opponent's batting average. And again, he gave up a run in his big league debut on July 31st. But since then, he's given up two runs in 19 and a third innings. Pretty impressive using that high fastball just like he is. Now he's got a nice slider. He'll work in there, change up when he needs it. Opponents only hitting 188 off of him. 28 strikeouts now. 19 and two thirds. Monty, you're talking about him competing for a starting role. What's your thoughts on that for next season? Well, that's certainly a possibility. He has a variety of pitches to do so, but I really like him in the bullpen. And, and one thing we've learned is the importance of having a locked down bullpen. And I think he has the ability to maybe be one of the guys that could be part of that tandem in that bullpen to lock things down. So I'm thinking as a starter, you know, they're going to stretch him out. His velocity won't be the same. I mean, I wouldn't imagine he can go out there as a starter and throw 93, 94 all the time. I'm thinking he's going to be more in the low 90s. But, you know, it's a thought. And the organization is thinking about that. The only thing I've noticed about him in, the, say, his last handful of outings is that he's not in that 95, 96 range like we saw a lot early on. Now, maybe some of that was adrenaline when he first got to the big leagues. I know he had a little. Uh, stiffness in his uh, flexor tendon or something in his uh, in his bicep. Oh, that's right. He had a bicep tendonitis, and you know, it just you you just never know. And and I, and I think having that velocity is key. Uh, but his ability to locate himself, and I I like the fact that he pitches off his fastball so effectively. He's whether it's 92 or 96, he's going to come right at you. And uh, Joel and I had a chance to talk to him about that. He said, I've been pitching with my fastball since I was eight years old. I did have done a you have been successful with it until it changes. I'm not going to change. No, I'm with you. I, I, I like him out of that bullpen. Kind of replaces Duffy as far as a, a strong arm lefty. That's the third time the Royals have struck out Brian Dozier tonight. You know, look at that change up from the sidearm. That's a little bit of Chris Sale in him right there. I mean, just just the fact that he's long and he he's, he's going to use different arm angles at times. But that was a, an exceptional pitch there. But that's exactly who I compared him to the first time I saw him pitch. I said this guy actually reminds me a little bit of another lefty we've seen a lot of, and that's Chris Sale because not as tall as Chris Sale, but he's got that you know arms and legs coming at you, a little bit of a lower three quarters delivery, and uh, just really quality stuff. And he has been mostly a reliever as a professional. It was just this year that the Royals really honed in on him being a starter. There was an innings concern because of having Tommy John surgery. And there was a need at the major league level, so he began to get some innings out of the bullpen. The one good thing about him being a starter for a lot of this year probably forced him to throw his off pitches more. Probably, you know, second, third time through the lineup forced him to throw his curveball, first forced him to throw that change up. And as a result, he's, he's probably a more rounded pitcher and probably more ready to pitch in the big leagues as a result of that. I was a reliever of the majority of my minor league career. I started for about one year, and that one year forced me to throw my change up, forced me to throw my curveball. As a result, it made me a more complete pitcher and allowed me to make it to the big leagues. And more confident with those secondary pitches. Right, and you have to be able to throw them. And you were you were the rare closer, Monty, that had 
more than two pitches. Right. I mean you. Would you have four or five pitches? I think four pitches but yeah. even you know, whether you're a closer your setup guy uh, if you're pitching in relief and you're not an overpowering guy you don't have that one pitch and you can tell the guy hey here comes my fastball try to hit it right you have to have other pitches to go along with it and I was uh, a guy I was always good righties fastball slider but I needed that curveball I need that change up against lefties to really kind of round out that repertoire. Late on a fast one. Now that was up there to 95. So he's gone from 91 to 95 with his fastball in this inning. Now he started out his first pitch of the evening was 91. And now he's he's starting to feel it. He's he's in game. He's competing. He's letting it hunt. Getting loose. Just inside two and two on Polanco. You know another finesse closer. I mean maybe. His last five years was left-hander John Franco. Johnny Franco, he he, he, he his changeup was his was his out pitch. You don't you rarely see a closer that had his changeup was his out pitch, but he he morphed into that. He kind of you know used different pitches as well. Ball comes down, he's out. Strom does his job. Stretch time. Royals and the Twins are tied at two. And Sam, excellent with Alex Gordon coming up. All right. She needs a nickname, Hud. She does. Sign extraordinaire. Uh, how about signage, Sam? Alex has singled and struck out tonight. Oh, well, we got King Richard, maybe just Queen Sam. Okay. Richard's just simple. He's just we are forever royal all the time. That's it. He made one sign. He's happy with it. He's not going anywhere. It's taped down. Yep. Those are the fans. Those are the fans you love, right there. Sam's fighting the wind, I think, a little bit. It was. It was. That was probably a heck of a sign in the living room with no wind, but you bring it out to the ballpark, that wind whipping out of the northwest. <laughs> One and two on Alex. Ah, finish him. That's the other one he made. Finish him. We need to get him like a 
King Felix in Seattle. They they pass around that big turkey leg. Oh, right. Be perfect. King Richard needs a big turkey leg. Perfect fit. Boshears strikes out Alex. Boshears took over in the sixth inning and retired three straight. So now four in a row as Panera takes us around the league. Seattle beat Houston, so the Mariners are a game and a half back of the. Second wild card spot. Houston drops it three games back. Boston with a win or a Toronto loss. Boston will win the East. And Baltimore in danger of losing their second wild card spot if that score doesn't change and the Detroit Cleveland score doesn't change. And a pitching change. Speaking of changes. And this is Alex Wimmers. With one out, nobody on, bottom of the seventh. Let's see if we can get the back of Sam's jersey. She already has her own nickname, Sign Girl Sam. There you go. Yeah, she, right. she tells us what to call her. That's right. Alex Wimmer's first pitch skips away from John Ryan Murphy. Paula Orlando is singled and walked tonight. Tag sign girl Sam. I like it. She does nice work. Wimmers was one of the eight Minnesota relievers last night and pitched two thirds scoreless with a strikeout. Fouled away, two and one. Same order for Paul Molitor so far. Starting pitcher, then Bashirs, then Wimmers. Wimmers got Kentries Morales and Salvador Perez for the last two outs of the sixth inning. Now he's on with one out in the seventh. Three and one. Upper 80s, low 90s sinker baller. Curve and a change. Challenge him with a fastball, three and two. It's going to be a nail biter for Paulo the rest of the way here. It's four games or so whenever he gets in because you know whenever you're borderline 300. Kind of puts you on edge. You know, you, you want to get that. That's where that walk's going to come in. The walk and a knock to help him finish the season over 300. That's big for a player. To Polanco, throws from the grass and on target. Two down. 
Royals fans, many kids in our community can't play baseball because they can't afford equipment. You can help by donating new or used equipment during the Royals equipment drive tomorrow. When the gates open, donated equipment will benefit Alta Vista High School, serving low-income kids in the greater Kansas City community. Thank you for that reminder. I'll see this Escobar with two down. Oh, and one. Eski rolled into a double play that ended the second inning, and he struck out those at bats against Santana. Oh, and two. Out to Polanco again. To the eighth. Royals two, Twins two. Royals baseball is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers, visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. Joaquin Soria in the top of the eighth inning, middle of the order coming up. Grossman, Sano, and Vargas. Fastball strike to Grossman. He is 0 for 3 so far tonight. And for Soria, appearance number 69. Only Kelvin Herrera has appeared in more games. 71. Fastball, and slider, curve change. I was going to say it's cool enough now. We're starting to see pitchers blowing into their hands in between pitches. It's been a long time since we've seen that. Mm -hmm. Broken bat, Escobar out, and it's down for a hit. Grossman is one for four. Little jam shot. Get a little two seamer. In on him, but he's had a good level swing. He's able to fight it off. Good effort. Esky almost got to it. 
know, most of the time when you're talking about keeping the ball down, I think you're referring to preventing extra base hits. But sometimes when you miss up, when you're trying to go down, even if a guy gets jammed, that can happen. Yeah. That target was not where the pitch ended up. You get jammed on a pitch that's down, you're going to get a weak ground ball. You get jammed on a pitch that's up, well, every now and then you're going to get a little bloop to the outfield. Fastball by him. One ball, one strike on Sano. He singled in front of the Vargas home run, which tied the game in the sixth inning. Great spot on him. You can't make a mistake in the middle. He'll hurt you. Good spot. You can see Salvi. He's he's really accentuating that low target. Another fastball. One and two. Drop that slow hook on him. Let's keep it down. Well, he did. Sorry, immediately looked back at the mound after missing with that pitch. Maybe his footing wasn't right. Now, as you know, this time of the game, there's a lot of holes out there from different pitchers. All these different guys coming in, they all have a different spot. Some will go on one side of the rubber to the other. Still two and two. A couple of heaters down the middle that Sano just missed. And this at bat. Four seamer. Popped up. Long run Merrifield. Long run Orlando. Paulo catches up to it. One down. It's not easy play for Paulo. It's nice to see him. Ooh. Sano. And it's nice to see that too. He made a pitch. Got away with it. Paulo though coming in checking out Merrifield now looking two hand in that one heads moving bobbing so is the ball when that happens. Tester. Now check a look at, uh, at uh, Paulo's hat Rhino. Do you how many big leaguers have you seen that have their cap over their ears tips. I'm sure I've seen it before but. Can't think of any names. Maybe two or three. OK uh, it's the first one I ever knew now I asked him I said Paulo what's the deal. He said. I have a small head. And the hat sizes. Are only at seven that's the lowest smallest hat size they have. So. And it, and, and it doesn't fit real well it, it falls off all the time. So if I if I put it over my ears. It stays snug to my head and the hat stays on. So he needs so, his ears to fill up the space. That's what he said. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. He's got a six something head. That's a very, very small head. And so, you know, they only order so only you know seven, he said was the smallest size they had. <laughs> Vargas on a 1 2 pitch in the sixth inning hit a two run home run against McCarthy to tie the game. And now a 1 2 pitch. Hit up the middle. Escobar to Merrifield. And they almost turned it into a double play because of the slow runner. That ball changed direction on Escobar. And it was hit so hard, Whitley didn't have enough time to get to second base. Hit speed on that probably was 100 plus. Escobar's had some hot shots hit at him. This is one of them. Now, fortunately, it bounced on the grass and then short hopped him. And the hit speed was 95. 
Still, he's able to get the out. That's all they needed. And now Paul Molitor will run for Vargas. James Beresford, who started at first base last night. Vargas there tonight. Beresford takes over with two down in the eighth inning. And Max Kepler at the plate. Oh and one. All right. I had a misread on the velocity on the hit speed there on that ball to Escobar off of Kenny Vargas's bat. I said 95. I misread. It's it was hit 111. That's more like it. Yeah. I could tell. Like I said, the metrics is all new system here, and having played in the infield most of my career, you had balls that were hit like that, and you went, "Whoa!" You would check the strings, wondering if it broke them or anything like that. And you're wondering, you know, that ball had to have been hit hard. We never knew how hard it was hit. Well, you only missed by 16. Yeah. No, that's my bad. Yeah. It's okay. Look, it, it's it's all about just trying to. Let the folks know about the grand game. That's what the new metrics is all about. If you, if you love baseball, you want to get more intimate with the game. One and two on Kepler. Two and two. Soria strikes him out, and he has a Scoreless eighth inning. It's been a good series so far for the Royals and their bullpen. Giving up just two runs so far in the first 19 innings. He ran for Vargas in the top of the eighth. Tied at two. Cuthbert, Dyson, Merrifield coming up. Chesler against Irvin Santana grounded out and struck out. The last hit for the Royals was Eric Hosmer's two run home run in the third inning. 
down to a knee as he missed a change up no balls two strikes. Fans want to see a run across the plate here. It's opportune time. Eighth inning. Wade Davis warming up. Perfect time to scratch one across. Oh, excuse me. It's Chris Young. We have not seen a run by the Royals since the third inning. Two run homer by Haas. Two balls, two strikes on Cuthbert. They've only had one base runner since then, and that was Paulo Orlando's two out walk. Royal scored two runs on four hits in the first three innings. And no runs, no hits over the last four innings. Way out in front, and that got Mike Gershley right in the wallet. Look at him. Didn't even notice anything hit him. Tough as nails. That's right. Ah, it's slight flinch, but it's okay. Ball's hard. It hurts. So is Jersh. Murphy makes a play. One down in the bottom of the eighth. Time for a too many at Mazda game break and we head out to Detroit and that is Ian Kinsler with a home run off of Cody Anderson. Three three tie in the top of the fifth inning there was a rain delay that's why they're so late in that game. Toronto leads Baltimore 2 one. They're in the bottom of the eighth inning so if Toronto stays in front Detroit wins Detroit will be tied with Baltimore for that second wild card spot with Seattle the potential of being one game out if Baltimore loses you know it's it's no doubt it's a nail biting time 1995 I was a member of the Angels as a player and we went down to the very last game of the season and we had, had to win the last we had to win three out of four from Oakland we beat them. The, the, the Seattle Mariners won and so now the season's over and we're tied so we had to well, buy a coin flip we lost and we had to fly up to Seattle and play the game that next day and guess who was waiting on us a guy named Randy Johnson it was tough we, we battled them through seven innings and then the wheels fell off and they ended up winning and they went deep into postseason and then after that Safeco Field was born mm. the enthusiasm of the people and just that postseason that Seattle experienced was enough to get him a new stadium as they were talking about moving the team away. So the timing was was good. It wasn't for me. That would have been my only chance to go into postseason, but it worked for Seattle. That was the positive out of that whole deal. But it was very nerve wracking. Almost lost a friendship with my with my good friend Mark Langston because we were so heated in the in the dugout. We yelled at each other and he wanted to fight me. And I said, oh, let's save it for another day. And that but, was caught on camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's very tough. This time of, of year can really be a lot on guys. Best thing to do: don't read the papers, don't don't uh, do anything if you're a player. As far as the media goes, don't even watch TV. Keep your focus, eat your good meal, go to the ballpark, and think about doing little things you can do to win. Right. That's all you can do, man. It, but it's very nerve-wracking. And that second wild card spot really has been great, even if you're a traditionalist and you just like the old division winners and. You know, if you don't win the division, you don't go to the postseason. Tough luck. Well, it has involved so many more cities and so many more teams over the last two to three weeks of the regular season. Which is good for baseball. It's good for the energy level. Taylor Rogers with one out in the bottom of the eighth. Rogers pitched an inning and a third late in the game last night. And he'll face Dyson with one out. Dyson lines it into left center field. He makes the turn. And there he goes to second. Potential winning run at second base with one out. Great time for his 12th double. 
And any time a guy with his type of speed hits the ball to the left or to the right of, of any fielder on the line like that, you have that kind of speed. When you hit first base, it don't take you but three seconds to get into second. So you got to really make a, a good throw to get him. Dyson had a slight hes hesitation coming out, but still, his speed overcame it. Now, Ned has options, but I don't think the one option that people would think Terrence Gore is not going to come <laughs> in here. Okay? No Gore to score here. It's going to be Dyson to score. He might be the only guy on the team that Ned wouldn't run for. Merrifield is 0 for 3. Fastball at 92 in for a strike. Twins are really trying to keep Dyson close. Dozier made a move for the bag, so he was out of position, and Rogers backed off the rubber. And now center fielder Byron Buxton, he's very shallow. He knows his chances of throwing Dyson out on a single aren't very good. Now, whenever that fielder shows his hand, his palm like that, open hand, that's that's when, hey, look, throw it. Throw it to me. That's a sign he uses, visual. Dyson to third. Throw. Safe. And that was a real quick, safe call. My third base umpire Mike Malinsky. And for obvious reasons, the Twins are going to want a second look. But normally the umpire watches the play, wait till it's over, and make sure the runner doesn't overslide the bag. But man, that play was still going on, and he was saying safe. Yeah, I liked it. Dyson, he, he got a good jump, took off, man, and he really picked up that speed about 10, 20 feet from the bag. Look at that dive. He's got full momentum going into that base, and the tag wasn't made till there. Yeah, he's right on top of the bag is third base umpire. Bonner waiting for his replay coordinator. Fans don't like it. it's taking too much time. No challenge. That's why the call on the field is so important. Could you imagine if we had replayed where if a manager challenged and the call on the field didn't mean anything and there would be no call stands, no, well, no clear and convincing. They had to make a decision in New York. And that was our most definitive look we had. Infield in. Okay. How about this? This is the third time now in these two games that Whitley's come up in a situation just like this. Okay, first first time he came up, he hit and you know bun into a double play, and can't remember exactly what he did the next time, but this time here, intentionally walked. That's right. This is made for him, and we talked about how Ned gave the sign to, for him that first time to bunt. And it's a good opportunity for Whitley, a guy who uses the whole field with the infield drawn in. Kepler's got nine outfield assists in right. He's pretty. He's got the best arm out of all of them. Good plate discipline there because two pitches ago, Ramon De Jesus, who's had a tight strike zone, he called a low strike, which was pitch number three. So you can imagine Witt thinking, oh, I got to expand the strike zone low, but he was able to lay off two in a row. Just keep those hands nice and loose up there. Just react. Good job. So he didn't try and make it happen. He didn't get a good pitch to hit, so he passes the baton to Eric Hosmer. And I'm not so sure that that 
was intentional there. I mean, that, that he, he, he didn't want to give Whitley anything to hit. He knew Hosmer was on deck. And so Molitor asked pitching coach to come on out, give him a little talk to. That's Neil Allen. Remember to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the KC metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Dyson at third. Merrifield at first. And not just the Royals leader, but one of the league leaders in go ahead RBIs. Eric Hosmer with 32, third in the league. Already the fourth most in Royals history. Mike Sweeney had 37 back in 2000. Hosmer, shallow center. Buxton makes a play. Dyson was coming, and he stopped. Well, it was shallow. I mean, it definitely was a definitely was not a you have to go fly ball, but I like the idea of making a rookie throw you out. Yeah, and you know what? Haas thought he had enough on it. Dyson with that speed didn't realize the throw was going to be such offline like that, but also he's keeping in mind that Kendry's Morales is on deck. So, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That was way off the mark. And sometimes the we don't know what happened here but sometimes the runner at third is doing what the third base coach tells him to That's do. That's exactly right. And lots of times when the ball is hit. The third base coach Jersey he can read that ball and he'll tell the runner right away don't go. While the ball is still in flight he'll say stay here. But Gerard is taking orders. Way outside with a breaking ball. Morales is 0 for 3 tonight. Morales singled against Rogers last night. He is 2 for 5 against this lefty. Oh man, did he muscle up? 1 and 2. Yeah, no, right down the middle. Hold his head just a tad. We'll do it again. Two and two. Taylor Rogers has got a change up now. That inside fastball sometimes will set the, up the change up and become a next pitch. Into the right field corner and Gets the job done. And he has tied the Royals record with 30 RBIs in the month of September. 
You know, Morales was looking for maybe something soft because he was late. He swung at that pitch like it was an off-speed pitch, but it was a high heater, but he's able to fight it off. He wasn't sure if it's going to stay fair. And so turns out that Mike Jershley, his decision to hold Dyson worked because, you know, it wasn't like they had a lesser hitter behind Hosmer. Morales is the second best run producer on this team. And he just feathered it fair. What a beautiful stroke. Yeah, good time to get Morales a nice round. Tying Al Cowens in 1977 and Jeff King in 1997. 30 RBIs in the month of September. They're going to walk Salvador Perez. And if Salvi can get two more RBIs in the next two days, then he would tie the Royals' record for RBIs in any month. So they're going to set up the lefty lefty here. Rogers. And Gordon. is one for three in the pass against Rogers bases loaded two down the Royals have taken the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning breaking ball for strike one Alex is one for three tonight with a second inning single One and two on Alex. With one out, Dyson doubled. He stole third. Merrifield walked. Hosmer flied to center. Dyson sold me. He started coming down the line on a fly ball to center. I thought he was going to try, and then he hit the brakes. He didn't just take two steps. No. He took about five. Line, right field, base hit. Merrifield scores. Here comes Billy Burns. He's in there. And the Royals lead by three in the eighth inning. of a lefty and like to throw those hooks away and he caught it this time as Rogers tried to hit the outside part of the plate Alex reached out look at the head position great swing second hit of the night and this one with a couple of stakes attached with him loaded Kepler good throw but better speed by Burns Kepler had the ball before Burns even hit third base J.T. Chagua jogs in from the right field bullpen.
5-2 Royals as they come up with three two-out runs. Kendry's Morales drove in Gerard Dyson to put the Royals in front, and Alex Gordon just hit a two-run single to drive in Burns and Merrifield. And now JT Shagwa with Paulo Orlando coming up, the eighth Royal to bat in the inning. Everything hard. ERA just under five. Hard sinker, slider. That'll be back into the crowd. Ball boy doing a good job of taking evasive action. Shagwa pitched last night. He was on the mound when the Royals bunted into the double play to end the bottom of the eighth. With Gore at third base and one out. Shagwa got out of it. Right field sinking and that's down in front of Kepler. Salvador Perez was the runner at second so Mike Gershley wisely holds him. And they're loaded up as the Royals will bat around. There you go that hit will get Paulo back over 300. Good stroke. Kept his hands inside little two seamer sinker but that ball left is out of the middle of the plate. Paulo knows what to do with those. Just soft step. Great head position. Escobar is 0 for 3. Down and away, ball one. Royals took a 2 0 lead in the third inning on Eric Hosmer's home run. But in innings four through seven, not only did they fail to score, they didn't have a single hit. And only one base runner over those four innings. And now they have come up with three runs on four hits in the bottom of the eighth. Wade Davis is just waiting in the bullpen. Two and one. At one point, he put his jacket on, went back, and sat down. The life of a closer in an inning like this, you never know. And if the Royals get another big hit, we'll probably see Chris Young in the ninth inning, so he's staying loose. Buxton is there in center field, and that's the inning. Nine come to the plate. The Royals score three. And Minnesota has a lower third of the order coming up against Wade Davis. Waiter, a couple of yellow hammers and a side of cheese to go, please.
tied it in the sixth. The Royals offense went dry. Innings four through seven. And then three runs all with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Oh yeah the Royals this is a typical Royals fashion win Dyson gets it all started with one out leg double that's right he hustled and he ripped off third base Morales he feathers one stayed fair by two feet down the right field line how about that Alex puts an exclamation point on the inning three runs scored with two outs like it two out lightning. Eduardo Escobar leads off against Wade Davis. One pitch and one out. Oh, I don't remember the waiter ordering a jam sandwich, but that's exactly what that was. A little, little, little cutter in on your hands. Took the bat, broke it. Wade pitched the ninth last night. Worked around a leadoff single and a stolen base. Mid 90s four seamer, 90 92 mile hour cutter, and an overhand yellow hammer curve. John Ryan Murphy takes a strike. He doubled back in the fifth inning, one for three. By pitching a scoreless inning last night, Wade Davis has not allowed a run to the Minnesota Twins since 2013. He has gone 21 and a third scoreless innings. Might that have been that play at the plate that he threw the ball away in that inning? Very early. Yes. I'm just having a flashback of Wade. On a, on a comebacker. That was in 14 early in the season. Okay. But those weren't his runs, if I recall. All right. It's a long time anyway. Mm -hmm. Facing a team in your division. 21 and two thirds scoreless innings, including tonight, and 28 strikeouts. The Minnesota Twins over that stretch are hitting 070 against Wade Davis. Three and two. Fans join us for Futures Night this Friday as we welcome select Royals minor leaguer players to the K. The event will feature pregame autograph sessions open to all fans on the left field concourse. So arrive early to meet your future Royals. Get your tickets now at Royals.com by calling 1 800 6 Royals. Futures Night. Drilled to left. And that'll sail up against the wall. Alex, good throw to second base. And Murphy has his second double tonight. <laughs> These guys, they don't give up. Are you kidding? Alex wanted to throw him out. That ball was a hard liner. I mean, he took a great jump, too, on contact. Now, watch this. He believes he can throw him out. And Murphy, the catcher, he had to change gears and kick it in to get to second base as he saw that throw coming. Let it go, Alex. Way to make a difference tonight. Runner at second, one out to Byron Buxton. To Escobar, who looks the runner back, two down. Coming up after the game, Joel and Monty will have Boulevard Royals live. And it started with Jason Vargas tonight, his third and final start. He went five scoreless, struck out six. Eric Hosmer's driven in two more, 103 RBIs. And then the Royals scoring three with two outs in the eighth. Those are 
some of the topics to discuss. And now Dozier 0 for 4 with three strikeouts tonight. Low for ball one. And 0 for 9 in the series. He walked and scored in the fifth inning last night. Good numbers against Davis. All four hits are singles. And Wade has struck him out twice. To Escobar. And the Royals have won the series. Waiter, check please. Very nice job. The Royals continue to attack. They don't give up. They continue to play hard. And one of the fans want to come see some good ball. Now, here are our keys to the game. Camo, he did start the game. He needed three RBIs. Check it off. All right. One more house call for the Dr. Vargas. You got that. How about him? Royals. One more win away from ensuring a winning season. Let's check out Vargas. All right. Final start of the year. Third start. He's gotten better every time. First hit of the game should have told the story. Struck him out. Struck him out. Vargas was cruising. Vargas struck out six. That's right. Only one walk. He looked good. The scalpel was sharp and can't wait to see him perform next year on the championship team. Great job. 87 pitches. If he had another start in him, he could go 100. Yeah. That's right. Congratulations. Well, the Royals have won four in a row. They have to win one of the last four games to finish above 500. They are 15 and three against Minnesota this year, including nine and zero here at Coffin Stadium. And if you go back to the end of 2015, the Royals have won seven straight series against the Minnesota Twins. Well, unfortunately, it won't be just Joel as King Richard sign requests. It's Joel and Paulo. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Big comeback for the Royals there. And Paulo, I just want to ask you about the importance of finishing strong. You guys are playing good baseball. That's not fair, Salvi. It's too cold for that. Oh, yeah, it's too cold. Too cold. I don't care if you're from Brazil or from Kansas City. It's too cold. But how important is it to be finishing the way you guys are? I have to be professional, you know. I have a lot, like, a couple games to to play hard every night. So you give it show for it, all the fans here. I want to ask you too, just about what you guys have been able to. Oh man. Oh. His his, his hat was stuck in there. Your hat's gone, Paulo. Did you need that hat? Oh, yeah. I, I think I find, like, small head inside in the locker room. <laughs> Somebody has your hat now. Is that all right? They can keep it? Yeah, I can keep it. All right, there you go. There's a souvenir stained with orange Gatorade and a size, like, seven or something like that, I guess. Um, let's just talk about what, what you guys have been able to do against the Twins this year. I just played such good baseball against them. Well, we have a lot of uh, report, you know, got the pitcher, so you just go there and, and try to like be approached and and and, and do it, do it whatever you want, you know, for win the game. Last thing for you, you get three starts out of Jason Vargas. How important is he to this team? Just seeing what he's been able to do these three starts back. Oh yeah, you're so happy about how he, you know, last year he had a tough year, so he came back this year and and, and do his job, so we'll be ready for next year too. Listen, if we have Salvi out here the last few days, you get to do the Gatorade toss, okay? Oh, yeah, I got you here in one time, I think. <laughs> Paulo, great job tonight. Go warm up. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Paulo Orlando, the Salvador Perez victim. I got to feel bad for him on that one, guys. <laughs> yep, it's chilly tonight and a little chillier for Paulo. Not that chilly. <laughs> There's the hat. That was a dirty move. Oh, that was even dirtier right there. Look at all that ice. Woohoo! Nice job, Paulo.